In this video, I will walk you through BTC Pay server user interface and show you how to navigate through different options. After you created your account on BTC Pay server, hosted by either yourself or a third party, you'll see a variety of options appearing here in the menu. Of course, you would need to be logged in into your account in order to see these options. If you're a server admin, you'll see the server settings. So, the first option here, server settings, is meant only for server admin and it is something only server admins can access. If you are using someone else's BTC Pay server, you will not see this option. Let's now click on that and see what things we have. The first option is users. Here you can add, remove or manage users of your BTC Pay server. You can add as many users as you wish and also modify and remove them accordingly. The second option is called rates. Here. You can set the source for cryptocurrency to fiat rates used by this server. You can also choose rates on store settings, which I will show you later. Email server is used only if you want to allow other users to register on your instance and if you want them to have a way to reset their password or verify their email before they register. Next is policies. In policies, you can either set to require a confirmation for registering or disable or enable registrations. If you disable registrations, users will not be able to register to your BTC Pay server. In services, there are lots of options. So, if you're using a Lightning Network uh, implementation that is Seal Lightning, you will not see these two because these two options are only for uh, LND. And the third option here is your BTC Pay SSH keys. SSH keys allow you to update your BTC Pay server through maintenance, which I will show you in a moment, without ever having to uh, log in into your virtual machine. So basically this here allows you a very easy way to update and maintain your BTC Pay server. It is very newbie friendly. Let's now go back to first two options. The first one here is if you want to expose your gRPC and connect your uh, LND Lightning Network to a certain wallet. And the second one is if you want to connect LND via the REST API. If by any chance you wish to modify the appearance of your BTC Pay server, you can do that here. But that's not something that is important. The most important option in all of these settings is maintenance. So here you can uh, change the domain name of your BTC Pay server if for some reason you wish to do that or uh, very important you can update your BTC Pay here. You can just click it, update, and your BTC Pay server will update. Uh, of all these settings please remember the maintenance because that is uh, what you will use quite often to keep your BTC Pay server up to date. Hangfire is something that will be removed, so I will not cover it in this video. Inside BTC Pay, you can create and manage an unlimited amount of stores. Each store has its own wallet and you can create uh, apps like point of sale or payment button. More importantly, you can pair that store with one of your e-commerce integrations, such as WooCommerce, Magneto, Drupal or even PrestaShop. You can create your new, new store by clicking here give your store a name and click create. Now that you have store, you'll see a bunch of other options opening inside store settings. So inside the general settings, you, you can configure settings for individual stores. You can set up derivation schemes for your wallet and adjust the number of confirmations per invoice or invoice expiration time. In another video called getting started with BTC Pay, I will explain to you how to set up your first store. But for now, just remember that everything important is located in stores settings. You will set up your wallets here, you can manage your Lightning Network and uh, connect it from here. And you can also manage third-party payment providers such as Changely if you wish to accept uh, altcoins and convert them to uh, supported currencies inside your BTC Pay. Besides general settings, we now have also rates. This is where you can set the source for prices shown in your BTC Pay. So you can select from a bunch of sources here. If you have no idea what this means or wh wh why you need it, just leave everything on default. In checkout experience, 
you can customize the appearance of the checkout page which will be shown to your customers. You can paste a link to your custom logo or to custom CSS style sheet. I will leave a link in the description of this video which will show you how you can customize your page here. Access tokens are used for pairing your uh, store through one of the BTC Pay e-commerce integrations or any other integration. So you can create access tokens here. In users, you can manage users and add them per store level. So if you need to allow someone to access your store for some reason, you can do that here. You can create them owner account or guest account. Right now we have payment button here, but uh, most likely it will move from here, so do not worry if you do not see it. I'll also leave a link in the description of this video how you can create a payment button, but for now you should know that if you want to create easy embeddable HTML button which will allow you to receive donations or payments, you can do that here. Ok, I covered store settings and let's now move to apps. Each store has access to different apps built on top of BTC Pay to extend its use case and functionality. You can create a point of sale app for instance and click create. In this video I will not go much into creating the point of sale app but you should know that if for any reason you wish to have a point of sale you can do that here. BTC Pay server also has an in internal wallet. So in internal wallet you can see the entire transaction history. Remember that this internal wallet does not have your private keys. You can only use it if you have a Ledger Nano S and your private keys are never ever uploaded to BTC Pay server. So basically you're just signing the transactions from BTC Pay server with your hardware wallet. Inside invoices, all of the invoices for your user account will be displayed here and you can filter the invoices by status or by store. You can also create invoices manually by clicking a create new invoice button. Invoices are sorted by date from new to old. Of course in this video I have no invoices to show you but you will see them listed here very neatly and you can preview a particular invoice if you need more information than what is displayed here. Our final option is my settings. When you click to my settings this is your user account settings. You can change your email, password but what I would like to show you is two-factor authentication for your account and I really recommend that you enable this and use a two-factor authentication app such as OT or if you really have to use it you can use Google Authenticator or any other two-factor authentication app to enhance the security of your user account. So that is uh, everything in this video. I hope you understood options and differences between the options a bit better. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.